This episode of Access to the Arts is being made possible through the support of First Bank Richmond, with eight locations serving Wayne County. First Bank Richmond and you, doing great things together. Hello and welcome to Access to the Arts. I'm Dave Paxton, and I'm excited to talk to Monica Coachline, the Executive Director of Richmond Symphony Orchestra, John Cook, the Performing Arts Manager at Civic Hall, and this edition of Access to the Arts, we're gonna find out about the movement to preserve and protect the landmark Reed Memorial Presbyterian Church. We'll learn about that and so much more on this edition of Access to the Arts. Welcome back to Access to the Arts. I'm Dave Paxton, and I'm joined now by John Cook, Performing Arts Manager at Civic Hall. John, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having uh, me. Civic Hall is a wonderful place for uh, performances of all types, but uh, you have uh, uh, some nice things on the lineup as you head into the new year. We do. Uh, coming up February 10th, it's a Monday. This isn't really open to the public, but I kind of wanted to put it out there for everybody to know, to know that we do these kinds of things. It's a kid's show uh, that features uh, this particular act, and it's called Dr. Kaboom. And he uh, he's a science guy. Okay. And so he does some things. Wait, should, should you do this? Science yeah. guy. <laughs> science. <laughs> he's, uh, but it, it's, uh, it's really fun. The kids like it. It, it. There's a curriculum that goes along with it, and the shows are one at 9.30 in the morning and one at 12.30 in the afternoon, and they're for four kids, grades four through sixth grades, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, basically he brings this show, he brings in like a big wheel, like uh, if you were on, uh, what is it, Wheel of Fortune? Mm -hmm. and only it's a wheel that goes this way. And the kids get to come up, he'll pick kids out of the audience, and they spin it, and whatever it lands on, that's the science project that they're going to see and he'll do a couple two or three in a 60 minute segment and it's pretty interesting he'll bring kids up they'll, like he could do uh, levitation or he could do uh, like the he can do levitation the, through science they wow. yeah they do crazy stuff and they do like a rocket that the kids can ride on that's propelled by I think water or something like that there's just different things that pop up and when when you see it it's just a lot of fun, and the guy's dressed uh, brightly colored uh, get up, and he has goggles on, and I mean, it, the, the kids are really engaged, and so it's a lot of fun. So that one's on February 10th. And now, let, before we move on, because yeah. I, I, I got a cu couple questions sure. to pop up. One, you said it's not open to the public, but it's open to the uh, the kids in, in the school system. Sure. So so all the uh, all the area schools are invited to, mm -hmm. uh, to bring the kids out for That's this. That's true. Uh, we have, all of uh, the Richmond schools are represented. Uh, all the elementary, middle schools will be there if they're four through six. Uh, we have kids coming from uh, Seton. Uh, we have kids coming from Friends School. Uh, we have kids coming from uh, Preble County in Ohio. We have kids coming from uh, Randolph County. Uh, we also have them uh, coming from uh, Blue River Valley, which is north of Newcastle. Uh, so we. Uh, Western Wayne schools are accounted for. Uh, so we have kids coming from all over the uh, east central part of the uh, state oh. and then also the uh, west side of Ohio mm -hmm. that come over for the And event. the second most important question, what is the cleanup going to be like for this? The cleanup, well that's great <laughs> because he does all the cleanup. He has a he has his own. I know we don't. Amazing. I know we don't even have to worry about the cleanup. Oh, and one other thing I should mention is that it's sponsored by Wayne County Foundation, one of our our uh, kid sponsors. Also, uh, Stam Stam Coachline Family Foundation is part of the the kid series. But uh, this particular one is uh, uh, the Wayne County Foundation. Uh, is the big sponsor, and we're you know really happy to have their kind of uh, backing for this uh, event. And that'll be fun. And yeah. then the big uh, event coming up is it's not the Oak and Bucket. They're not fighting no. it out, but <laughs> musically it's the combination of the Purdue Varsity Glee Club and the IU Singing Hoosiers. It is, and that's uh, it's a big event on. 
February 22nd. It's a matinee, so it's at 3.30 in the afternoon. It's a Saturday. Uh, but w they're teaming up. Uh, I think it's going to be an amazing event. Um, one of them will sing the first tack, uh, half of the show, and then there'll be an intermission, and then the other takes the second half. And then at the end, they're going to come back together and actually combine forces. And we're going to bring out uh, one of the Richmond uh, choirs to sing along with them. They're going to do a combined uh, Purdue Glee Club, Varsity Glee Club, I guess, and uh, Indiana U University Singing Hoosiers and the, the Richmond Choir together. And the uh, Purdue Varsity Glee Club, they've been around uh, since, what, the 1890s? That's, yeah, that's... And Which yes, so just correct. a long. I, I have personal friends who were part of that. Yeah. And then the Singing Hoosiers, Grammy-nominated uh, group. Multiple. They're actually comprised yeah. of uh, the world-famous Jacobs School of Music. So they are. some quality, uh, quality singing voices that are going to be on that's, tap. That's true. Uh, the, the Varsity Glee Club also is only male. So if you're not familiar with them, it's all male uh, group of about 65 guys. Uh, and then uh, IU Singing Hoosiers are male and female. And uh, obviously it's, it's a pretty impressive performance, both groups. coin flip who, well, who how are they going to figure that out i didn't know if we'd have to do it by you know applause meter or something okay. like that bring it out on stage maybe uh, we might have to have a gong show kind of approach you know i don't think that'd be a good <laughs> idea but yeah it should be we also, whoever actually won the most previous basketball game maybe you right. could do that that's right well somebody asked me if we were going to split the auditorium down the middle and put all the black and gold on one side and the cream and crimson on the other side and i thought well that'd be a great idea except it'd be hard to separate our tickets out that way because they're purchasing all over the place. <laughs> you have to ask that prior as you come. Yeah. Just have the ushers. They just have yeah. to do their due you, diligence. Yeah. yeah. Who are you right. with? So Kinda the like Singing Hoosiers and the Varsity Glee Club, and what's the date in, uh, again on that? February 22nd, 3.30 p.m. It's a Saturday. And uh, tickets, how do they get them? Uh, if you'd like to get tickets, uh, you can contact uh, Civic Hall box office. You can give us a call, which is... 765-973-3350, or you can go online to www.civichall.com uh, and you can order online and then we'll contact you. Awesome. Yeah. Great, uh, a great battle between two uh, very yeah. good singing groups. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be fun. So uh, Singing Hoosiers and Varsity Glee Club and also Dr. Kaboom. Dr. So you Kaboom have lots and the Wheel up. of Science. All right, John Cook from Civic Hall, and we'll be back with more. I have had the pleasure of taking care of probably 35,000 cataract patients. It really is meaningful to people. It changes their lives. It gives them back things that, that they hold dear. It seems like you can't do anything without proper banking help. I've had a very good experience working with First Bank. You have people that you know and you grow a relationship with. I just have the confidence that the banking part of it will be okay. Back on Access to the Arts, joined now by Monica Coachline, mm -hmm. Executive Director of Richmond Symphony Orchestra. Monica, this is our first chance to actually spend some quality time. Mm -hmm. So officially, nice to meet you. Uh, had, a, had a nice, enjoyable little conversation before we started this, mm -hmm. talking about uh, the Richmond Symphony Orchestra. And one of the things that you brought up is you are already in the planning session for mm -hmm. next season. I know we're going to get to this <laughs> season because you've got a second half that's coming up, but you're already in the planning session for next season. 
season. We are. You know, you have to start early because you have to market early. Mm -hmm. um, but you also have to get people hired early. You have to secure dates. You have to secure artists. You have to know whether music is available and what you're going to pay for it. So um, our conductor puts in a lot of work, music conductor and music director. Uh, Guy Bordeaux put it, puts in a lot of work over the Christmas holiday. In fact, um, mentioned to me that he is 95% done planning the next season. So it is it is odd. I have three concerts left. We're only halfway through the season, and yet um, most of the spring is going to be spent preparing for next season and kind of just finishing off this year. Yeah. So you get to this place, and it's like you are restarting something brand new. So I will not hold you to the dates no. if you kind of if you're thinking 2021, yeah. and even though the dates are 2020. But you mentioned second half of the season, absolutely. And uh, what's kicking it off? Sure. So um, I don't know. I don't know what's kicking it off. I have the dates. That's all I'm allowed to know until um, actually we have a concert February the 1st and Guy will be with us and he'll be sharing and introducing the season. He has it planned, but it's a big okay. secret to the rest of us okay. until he's ready. Um, what I will say is we're staying predominantly on the same dates. We'll stay in September. We'll stay in October. We'll move um, back into December, which was our ever popular movies concert, um, which we did have to switch this year to November. But it'll be back in December and we'll finish off with February, March, and April. All right, so you do have the Symphony and Song from New York we to do. London. That is coming up February 1st, mm -hmm. and that starts mm -hmm. the next uh, three, P you mentioned the next three uh, uh, shows that three shows. Uh, we're going to be putting on, and uh, mm -hmm. that talk a little bit about that. Sure, so our guest artist is uh, Deb Bordeaux, our conductor's wife. Um, you know, she likes to sing with the symphony pretty regularly. Um, Guy Bordeaux said, oh, I feel like we use her a lot. But there was a petition that went around this community um, a year ago, started by um, a friend of the symphony who said she needs to be back on the stage. So based on those 50 or 75 signatures we got, um, that seemed to influence the programming. So she'll be singing some uh, Aaron Copeland pieces. We're really excited to have her. So that'll be February. Um, March, our ever popular concert, we travel off-site once a year. Um, in our series, we'll be in the Seton Gym again, which if you've not been in, has incredible um, just dynamics. It's a beautiful sound. It's great. It's a concert in the round, so it's an opportunity to sit behind the orchestra. It's an opportunity to sit behind, near a bass player as opposed to watching them from the stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll finish the season um, in April and we'll feature our concert master, Mari Lundy. Lundy. And that actually, uh, in the gym, that probably gives you a little bit more close proximity, maybe gives you an opportunity to hear the piece. Uh, from different aspects Absolutely. with a little bit more emphasis on whatever uh, section you're sitting mm -hmm. near. And I, I think I'm... That kind of opens up Yeah, and the people hearing. are surprised, mm -hmm. I think, because they, they watch the percussionists and they're like, they work really hard. But when they're in the back of the orchestra, you don't see their movement. Their goal is to not move a lot, but they can't hide it there. And so it's, it's interesting just to see like how much of the concert the musicians really play and how little of breaks they get in the music. It's always fun uh, for myself going to, to concerts uh, like this. I try to, f uh, each piece, mm -hmm. I try to find somebody different in mm -hmm. the orchestra and just kind of watch them mm -hmm. as they work their way through the piece. It's, mm -hmm. it's because not only are you hearing it and enjoying it, but it also kind of gives you a little bit more intimacy of, mm -hmm. of what their uh, performance, how they're working their way through the piece. Right. When people call in, I... <sighs> and they're not regular attenders, I almost always encourage them to be in the balcony for the first time because the symphony, for me at least, is not just an auditory experience, it's a visual one as well. Mm -hmm. um, and to be um, in the balcony and to be able to see what people are doing and when, you know, how they're cleaning their French horns, you know, the spit out of their French horns during the concert, you can't see that when you're sitting on the main floor as well. Mm -hmm. And mention also a good opportunity to see some of the, uh, the mm -hmm. great musicians in smaller ensembles. You do that yeah. also. We are. We're, we're finishing off our Bethany series. We've been really fortunate to be partners with Bethany Theological Seminary. They've supported a recital series for the 18, 19, and 1920 season. So we have two of those recitals left, and they'll be on March 29th and April 19th. Sunday afternoons at 4, um, free desserts, just a really nice opportunity to be really intimate with our musicians, usually about 75 people in attendance so great opportunity free and that is an opportunity also because mentioned sometimes you can be a little overwhelmed with the, <laughs> the orchestra as a whole yeah to actually experience the quality of each and every musician and in smaller mm -hmm. ensembles you really get to 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 experience how good they really they are they really are and and hear them talk about their careers and uh, listen to their interpretation of the music is always nice 
And then we also talked before we got on the air here, uh, something that I wanted to bring up because it's mm -hmm. close to my heart. I've got a daughter, two daughters mm -hmm. that actually have uh, played, and I've got a younger daughter who plays the violin, but uh, talking about introducing mm -hmm. music to the younger generation, mm -hmm. and uh, particularly symphony orchestra, mm -hmm. if you can get them started young, yeah. it's something that'll stay with them for the rest of their lives. Yeah, so we, you know, we're always trying to look for a gap that we can fill, a need. We, we try not to offer programming unless we hear that it is a need and um, we can do something about it. We're really strategic about what it is that we can really effectively carry out. And one thing that was mentioned to us is there's just not a lot of opportunity for um, the young students in uh, Richmond Community Schools and in this county to be able to have much of an instrument introduction process. So we're going to be um, in the middle schools this, uh, this spring um, introducing um, instruments to fifth graders because they'll be selecting instruments for sixth grade. So we'll introduce that to every fifth grader in Richmond Community Schools and hopefully be able to add some area schools as well. And that's one where kids out there, parents out there, they're going to play a lot of wrong notes. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly when they first pick up the instrument, they're going to play a lot of wrong <laughs> notes and think, why am I doing this? But that's a, th th this is the time where you encourage them, get all the wrong notes out. Because eventually, <laughs> you're going to begin to understand the instrument and play it. And uh, it, it really does. You talked about uh, listening to the musicians in ensembles mm -hmm. and how they interpret music. Mm -hmm. That's a level of understanding that these kids will get to yeah. at a certain point where they'll start to understand it's not just playing the music yeah. you're kind of feeling it and, it and you're making it your own Absolutely. and it becomes a, an individual composition each time you play mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's something that we're the, excited yeah absolutely mm -hmm. so getting out there and, and getting them started early mm -hmm. is, is a huge aspect and it's also a big big thing for the kids to get them to come see the musicians play. Yeah. So this is not yeah. a case where just adults no. need to come and enjoy the symphony. This is one where you you can encourage the younger generation to come out and see really yeah. spectacular and, and music. And a really good reminder that students under the age of 18 attend all of our concerts for free. Yeah. So once again, symphony and song from New York to London. Mm -hmm. That's coming up February 1st. Mm -hmm. And maybe we'll find out about the next season coming we up soon. We will be finding out soon. Uh, the brochures will be um, in hand by the end of March. And tickets, uh, you can get them through richmondsymphony.org or calling 765-966-5181. Excellent. Monica Coachline, nice meeting you nice and thanks meet for you. joining us today. Thank you so much. Hello, welcome to the number nine girl. Running a family-owned business requires teamwork, while I'm managing the floor. I'm keeping an eye on the food and planning upcoming menu items so that I can take care of the books and make sure everything's running smooth. Being a family business means having each other's backs. Which is why we're happy to have First Bank Richmond as part of our business family. As people we know and trust, to be there when we need them. And it doesn't hurt to be right across the street, too. Welcome back to Access to the Arts. Uh, right now, in the Wayne County area, there is uh, an effort that has uh, gotten underway. Uh, the Reed Memorial Presbyterian Church uh, no longer holding services there. The congregation's moved on. So a local group has gotten together. I know Ray is involved and some other, uh, some other civic leaders are involved. And they're working with uh, the Landmarks uh, organization to try to save that building. And we are excited to be joined by Jessica Raposo. It's, uh, a Assistant pro Professor here at uh, Music, uh, I'm getting this right, <laughs> Assistant Professor of Music at Indiana University East, and talking with you today about that movement because you and IU East are a part of helping to keep that building uh, up and open. Yes, we're very excited about that. Um, Ray contacted us in the fall to ask if the IU East Music Program might be interested in using the Reed Memorial Presbyterian space for any upcoming concerts that we had going on. and. 
it was good timing because our auditorium here is under construction right now and so it was a great way to sort of take our music program out into the community a little bit more. Um, so we have wonderful faculty teaching here. We love to showcase them within, whenever possible. So in just a couple weeks, our piano instructor, Heiwan Yang, is going to be giving a recital at the, at the church. Uh, that, that'll be Monday, January 27th at 7 p.m. And then we have another faculty concert happening in February. And then our choir is going to be performing with the Earlham College choirs in April. So we're just really excited about these three programs that and we're bringing in. Let's talk a little bit about the building itself. And I know from a standpoint of music and acoustics and, and, and how churches around the, the turn of the century were constructed for, for beautiful music to be able to get out to the the last pew in the, in the uh, in the church sanctuary, mm -hmm. uh, and a church like this to perform in that as opposed to an auditorium, it gives a it opens up a whole new aspect of how the music can be presented. It really does. Um, the the space is beautiful. High ceilings are always good with acoustics. One thing that appealed to us uh, with using Reed, especially for the choir concert, is having access to an organ. That concert is going to be, um, the, center, the central piece of that concert is going to be Benjamin Britten's Rejoice in the Lamb, which is for soloists, choir, and organ. And so to be able to perform a piece like that in the way it was intended versus just on a piano in our normal concert hall is an opportunity that we couldn't pass up. So that was an immediate draw for our choir directors, both here and at RLM. So. And, and especially from a standpoint of, of atmosphere. Exactly. The windows, the, the, just the, the whole, you know, just the beautiful nature of it, it not only lends itself to how good it's going to sound, but also um, it, it literally kind of gives you mm -hmm. a little different spirit in how you perform. Exactly. The other great thing that we're excited about is that there's an original star piano in the church. And not all the star pianos have survived well um, from the past, but this one is playing with this really beautiful warm tone and the, the pianists are, are excited to play on it and to have that sound filling that space um, for our, our audience members to be able to be in there and experience that is just going to be lovely. You mentioned uh, that the IU East faculty recital is going to be held there something that you're involved in. It is. Can you talk a little bit about that? Sure. So on February 27th, which is a Thursday evening, um, we are going to have, you might call it a gala concert, a collage concert, rather than one person giving a recital. We're going to have multiple faculty coming and playing a piece or two. So mm -hmm. it's a way to showcase our faculty. And it's something we've been doing almost every year the last few years. But we're very excited this time around because it's looking like we're going to have Earlham faculty joining us as well. So it'll be a joint project with both music programs to showcase our faculty and celebrate the music education happening at both institutions. And then you mentioned it a little bit earlier and talked about it, but uh, the IU East and, and Earlham choirs and, and also getting together. Yes, that's actually been a regular collaboration for several years now. This is my seventh year here and it was going on before I arrived. So um, every couple years uh, there's a major concert. We had one in Civic Hall last spring, but then on the years in between we like to do something a little smaller and so this was the perfect way to, uh, to bring that. And it's nice because you mentioned obviously the auditorium under a little bit of uh, reconstruction uh, getting mm -hmm. updated gets in an opportunity to get it out into the public a little bit more and, and into a place that uh, has the history of Wayne County. It really does. Um, the, our program is small and so you know we've been building up little by little over the years and so to have the chance to show the community the work that we're doing, the work that our faculty are doing, the work that our students are doing, our ensembles, um, the more we can bring them in, there's more music to be enjoyed. And so that's what we're looking to help do for Richmond and Wayne County. And these, uh, these, these uh, concerts are, are free. Yes. That's even better. Mm -hmm. Gets the, the public a chance to, uh, to see some quality music in a wonderful venue. And hopefully all that works to save the building and, and to keep it available for concerts in the future. We hope so. It's too beautiful a space to let go. Absolutely. And if you are at all interested in that movement to save the church, you can search for Friends of Reed Memorial Presbyterian Church on Facebook, and that way you'll get more information on their efforts, and also, more importantly, 
if you just want to come out and enjoy great music, get information on the, uh, on the upcoming concerts. Great. Excellent. Je Jessica Raposo, Assistant Professor of Music at Indiana University. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right. Thanks again for joining us on Access to the Arts, and thanks to our guests for coming out and helping spread the word on what's going on in the Richmond and Wayne County area. I'm Dave Paxton, and as we leave you, here are other events available in your area. This episode of Access to the Arts is being made possible through the support of First Bank Richmond, with eight locations serving Wayne County. First Bank Richmond and you, doing great things together.